Yeah, Dr. Foy, first of all, thank you again for being here. Um, we have, I think, top of the line in the country, but could you talk a little bit more about Wisconsin's system and why you feel it kind of stands out among other states? I'd be happy to do that. Um, I think there's a few things that Wisconsin's pretty fortunate because we've had a long history of um, connecting apprenticeship with academic programs, but that's one of the things that is different in Wisconsin is that that relationship between the Department of Workforce Development and the technical college system is codified in statute. We know how to work together and we do that um, very well. Um, we also have a technical college system that our curriculum is developed, whether it's for apprenticeship programs or for academic programs, on a competency-based um, basis. So that means we build uh, learning modules. We put um, all of our curriculum into a database, again, whether it's for apprenticeship programs or academic. And what that um, results in is it makes it very easy for us to crosswalk between those two kinds of delivery models and therefore combine credentials for students. Um, we also have a very, very strong relationship with state employees, employers, excuse me. So um, that makes sure that our curriculum, again, whether it's for academic programs or for apprenticeship, is current. Um, it is modified appropriately as the industry changes. Um, and we have one other component that I think is, actually I know is quite unique in the country, which is that we have paid related instruction. So um, that's really important, I think, for reaching those populations that maybe haven't been as big a participants um, in apprenticeship and also incumbent workers who want to advance their skills. Because without paid related instruction, they have to take essentially a pay cut in order to get the um, classroom instruction. And that makes a big difference. It makes it much more attractive for um, employees. And frankly, it is never something that we hear a concern raised by employers. They're happy to pay it because they see the value. OK, and when we talk about cooperation with the university system, is Wisconsin somewhat unique in the ability to have um, tech school, what we call our tech school credits, go to the university and university credits go to the tech school? Um, I think that we are made a lot of good progress in that area, and particularly in apprenticeship, I think we are quite unique. Um, I think we also ha have some other states around the country that we are um, using as models for us in terms of what is possible. Program to program articulation has not been something that um, has um, happened that much in Wisconsin in the past, but it is definitely our focus now. And I think for programs like apprenticeship, it's going to make a big difference in terms of that next step articulation from apprenticeship to a short-term certificate uh, to an associate degree and a bachelor's. Okay. Recently, I ran to somebody who uh, knew somebody who graduated from Moraine Park. I think they went to the Beaver Dam campus. And we were told, I think uh, they're going to be working on the um, electrical lines. Mm -hmm. uh, very challenging job, but they're making six figures. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I have a problem with is so many people, including a lot of politicians, talk about a four-year degree being a panacea and the, the height of achievement in society. And I always bristle when I hear politicians say that. What can we do to get politicians and other people in society to stop, maybe in a snobby way or whatever, uh, always pushing the four-year degree? I personally think that the career pathway model is the solution to a lot of different academic providers as well as industry um, employer recruiters because the pathway model recognizes the fact that uh, a high school diploma is not going to get you very far in your career in the next uh, 20, 30, 40 years. Everybody needs to be continually learning. Industry is changing too fast. Um, for us to stop at any credential. And that goes true for a bachelor's as well. So our job as educators is to make sure that you can continually access increased skill sets and increased credentials. Employers are interested in matching their job opportunities with those kinds of credentials, paying people at the right amount for the right skill set, and then creating a pathway to advancement. And when you talk about it in terms of pathways, then it, it's not so much us against them. Representative, it's more about what role and what part do we all pay play in that path. Okay. Um, so, 
I, I was at an Eagle Scout ceremony on Sunday, and I felt very good because, you know, I always ask the Eagle Scouts who usually complete their uh, Eagle Scout as a senior in high school. And I asked the guy what he was going to do, and, you know, he was obviously a sharp guy. And he was uh, not going to the tech school system, but he was going to the trades. And I thought it was really good that we made progress that this, you know, obviously top of the line guy uh, telling me that, you know, he was, he was going to become an electrician. I thought, man, you made the right decision. But we're, I think we're making progress. Thank you.